Hello and welcome back to season three of the Yellow Squared podcast. That's right. My name is Ned. I'm joined by my brother James for season three of the podcast. We're absolutely buzzing to be back. We've had our summer break. So James, how are you doing? And how are you looking forward to 24-25? Mate, I'm, I'm very good. I hope you're well. I hope the listeners are well. It's mm. It's been a, a long break, but a much needed break for us. Uh, but, you know, we've not been slacking. We've had uh, plenty of planning meetings. And we've, yes. we've got some really exciting ideas that we're, uh, that we're trying to... To get after this season, which you know, a few of those points will definitely come out in this in this preview pod. But mm. rest assured, mate, just because we haven't been recording doesn't mean I haven't been going through my own preseason. You know, it's, you know, minutes in the tank type yeah. stuff. Yeah, all I've minutes. Been, you know, I, I've been doing too much. You know, I've just been practicing pressing the record button and, and not doing too much. <laughs> just sort of build building up slowly. Uh, yeah. So you know, we, we come to today. Today is very much like uh, the Brentford game of yesterday. It is. Yeah. Our our season starts with Millwall away. Um, next weekend so you know this is a little bit more of a relaxed feel mm. to the pod to talk about a few things which i'm really really looking forward to i know it's been a bit of a it's been a couple of weeks off yeah uh, but we we've not stopped chatting uh, no. about football but uh it'll be it'll be nice to to get back into the swing of things for season three i can't believe it. i know it's... see it's crazy it is crazy yeah well then i think we have to start with just some uh, some general feels about the uh, the upcoming season. There hasn't been a right lot of transfers in. There's been yet more transfers out as we'll get into the uh, the nitty gritty of all those uh, all those big numbers slightly later on in the podcast. I'm just going to pass this over to you, James. How are you feeling um, at this current point after Brentford after a series of preseason games? And uh, with the current coach and squad, how are you feeling? Well, that's a that's an exam question, isn't it? I think this I think this is the first summer and preseason where my expectations for Watford have been as low as as they have been for a long time, a long, mm. long time. Um, I think it's just I think I, I don't know. You you may feel the same. Listeners may feel the same. Not sure, but I just think that we're going into the season not really knowing what to expect for the first time in a long time. I mean, mm. the results have been, well, indifferent, erring on the side of bad. Um, if, if you want to, if you want to read into preseason results, yeah, I'm not a massive fan of reading into them too much, no. but we've not really played very well. Transfers, like you say, there's been very little in and out. And I suspect one influences the other, um, which we'll come to. And it just feels like around the club, it's a little bit, um, yeah, a, a little bit unsettled. You know, it, ha, had there been, had it been any other ownership and you were bringing in, you know, Tom Cleverley, you know, club legends into the coaching staff, promoting from within, I think it'd be a really, mm. ordinarily, it'd be a really, um, you know, like uh, exciting um, and enthousi- enthusiastic time. But I think that's just been shadowed by a lot of the stuff that's gone on off the field, yeah. um, a lot of the uncertainty. So, yeah, sorry to start on a bit of a dampener, <laughs> but, uh, yeah, it's 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 been nice to not have to focus too much on Watford over the summer. I think it's probably the best, mm. the best way of doing it. What about you? Yeah, I, I mean, I feel like I've definitely uh, taken a step back from Watford, but I've been very much um, involved, keeping up to date with everything um, across various you know Watford socials that have kept going through the summer so a massive shout out to those guys um because mm. you know it's been great uh keeping up to date with everything but I'm um, to be honest I'm a bit like you uh I didn't I don't have really any expectations of this Watford side for the upcoming season um I think we're you know quite far away from even playoffs at, at this point oh um yeah. but I was you know to be honest after the Hibernian game, I was kind of looking forward to, uh, you know, how we get on. I think um, some of the youngsters coming through have looked really good uh, in preseason so far. Lots of minutes for those uh, for those younger players, and yeah, I'm, I'm quite excited to see how they get utilised through the season. Um, then we get to to Brentford at home, and it basically 
was just the season, the team from last year, minus Kone and Aspria, which really struggled towards the end of the season. Um, so it's a uh, yeah, it's 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 not an easy not an easy thing to to say, um, but yeah, it's it's not. It's not all sunshine and roses for Watford. It, it never is. Um, but yeah, it's uh, there's a lot of uncertainty, isn't there? Um, yeah. And rightly so. At this point, rightly so. You know, we did a podcast way back in season one, um, just chatting about Gino Pozzo, and I, I think if anything, it's probably got worse his relationship with the fans since then. Um, yeah. I don't know whether this is the podcast to be uh, to be talking through everything that's going wrong with with the Potsos, but yeah, it's uh, it's not particularly sweet at the moment. Um, the feeling around Watford, which is a shame, because seeing all of the uh, sort of inside stuff, you know, they've had lots of players recording stuff for the mm. for the media, and and you know, the, the dressing room looks happy. Um, they all look very together. But I just don't know if we have enough this season without investing anything really into the squad, and uh, that's the that's the reality of uh, of being a Watford fan this season. It's uh, it's going to be tough, I think. That's uh, that's my. This feels very oh, miserable, it, doesn't it? For a it does, but for, for a think, summer for podcast. The, but you know, for, for the, I think that's the problem, and that's the situation we're in as as a club and as a fan base uh, is. You can't you at the moment you can't talk about the on field uh, news performances um, you know goings on all of that stuff on the playing side of things you can't talk about that without acknowledging or understanding what's going on off mm. the pitch and I think that's that's the situation we're going to be in for a long time yes yeah. um, uh, because as as fans I mean if we just take some of the things that have happened over the summer uh, you know you're right you know we the fans were offered an opportunity to to invest in the club mm. you know that 10 percent stakes 17 and a half million um which is really taken off clearly uh with i think it's about four million invested yeah. so far i think it with, it, with, with the promise of that being mm. invested in the playing squad so 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 you could have in things like that yes we're now sh- we're now sharing a technical director in Gianluca Nani who was originally signed to the end of the season to Watford yeah to cover to cover the gap but clearly as our permanent thing mm. you've got massive transfer deals coming out yeah you know Kone the the rumors around Aspria yes yeah. L- loser on the bus off the bus is Wesley Hoot leaving mm. you know you've got all of those big stories that are happening sort of off the pitch mm. and affecting playing stuff but no, nothing's really happened which then means you can't move forward no in signing players and it all just leads to a confusing picture and as fans we don't know what we're what we're actually going to expect i don't think cleverly knows what he is going to be dealing with come the first of september at the mm. end of the window so it just feels very unsettled um which is not what you want going into yeah uh, into the season yeah, it's um, it is unsettled. Yeah, that that's exactly what it is. It's it's very difficult for for cleverly to build a build a squad, build a team, if potentially a, yeah. a large majority of your spine is potentially leaving. Um, oh yeah, Kone Kone is already gone. Aspria is more than likely to be leaving now. Um, yeah. Maybe loser stays, maybe Hoot stays, um, maybe Trabs on Spore <laughs> will leave us alone eventually. Um, but yeah, it's it is unsettling. I think if if those players are playing in pre season, losers played quite a lot in pre season. Actually, is our top goal scorer in um, in pre season yeah. with two. Um, yeah. You know, it's it's a big. Bigger, and he's you know he's getting on in in his in his ex- experience um, of as being a pro and in a squad that's very young. Losing people like Loser and Hoot is you know very dangerous because there's no leaders really on the pitch. When you look at the uh, at look all. at the starting midfield, you've got Sissoko back, which is a massive boost. Um, 
but he's going to be filling that Livermore position. I don't know how fit Sissoko is. I don't know if he can play every game um, in the team. Yeah. I don't think he's ever played uh, a full season in, in the championship unless he was part of that Newcastle side in that was in the championship. Well, uh, yeah, I think, was he? Was that not? Yes, he must have been because he moved to England in 2016, I think. So, yeah. He I'm, might I'm have been. That, he might, we he, might be he, wildly he out of the ballpark here. Uh, um, I'll have a look for you now. Uh, but, um, yeah, it's, we're losing, we could be losing a lot of players who change the game for Watford and without replacing them, um, without knowing if we can replace them, which is really a, a silly, um, it, it's, it's a silly method to, to signing players, to be honest, this one in one out nonsense, as far as I'm concerned, when we don't have the players yeah if you're waiting for people to leave you know the transfer window doesn't end when the season starts it's it's yeah it's it's a dangerous game to be playing and i think we could yeah. sink if we don't get it right and as the past think... two seasons have shown we haven't got it right with transfers yeah and i think cleverly could be the victim of um of another manager not being backed in the window and then have him to yeah. play with a you know basically a B team in the championship and it doesn't work yeah. unfortunately um can't wait for Neil Warnock though in uh, at christmas that's going to be fun <laughs> yeah uh yeah just just to sort of close off on this part i, I the, and i'm not i'm not being a, an apologist but uh i think the club would have wanted us to have gone earlier probably um, yes. so, they, so they knew that what money they would have had to have, have played with. Um, I'm not naive enough to think that if he was to go for 25 million, that doesn't mean we have 25 million uh, to spend <laughs> no. on players. Uh, and I know that, uh, but I do suspect that the Euros and the you know Copa America being when it was, and then having players on on holiday, I think that has slowed business across mm. well, across across you know Europe um, and the world, I guess. So. Yeah, um, I suspect more business will be done between now and, and the end of the season, and I think that's yeah. where the reinvestment, if it's going to happen, will happen. Uh, mm. But I, I agree with you. I worry that Cleverly uh, is 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 going to be thrown under the bus. A um, couple of points on the positive side of things, because it's pre-season, mate. Come on, we've got to have some positivity. Yeah. Uh, just to clarify. Um, Moussa Sissoko has never played in the championship. Uh, nice. He was sold. He was sold by Newcastle when they got relegated. Yeah. Uh, to Spurs. He's never played in the championship. I've thought so far, I thought in the Brentford game, Sissoko looked more mobile than Livermore. Yeah. Um, and uh, it's still it's still good on the ball. Um, mm. Clearly scored a goal. So so I think uh, if he does still have the legs, I think he's going to be more of an asset than Livermore. Yes. Was, but for a longer he... period of time, I think. That has to yeah, be I, I think so. I, th I, I think so. Um, I will say that I have enjoyed the system, and I think that's the one thing that cleverly, if if he gets that right, will help us massively. Yes. I think the system. I think the system has been quite good, to be honest. I quite like how much more attacking mm. we feel. Yeah. Um, and some of the I football think... we've been playing, by the way. Um, yeah. yeah. Even yeah. though we lost two 0 to Gillingham. Um, we dominated them in terms of moving the ball about and it was slick, it was fast, it was on the ground it was really, really interesting football to watch um, yeah. there's that clip at Hibernian that went kind of kind of viral I guess um, of us moving the ball really quickly through the lines I think the, the way we're distributing the ball from centre-backs is excellent um, much better, isn't it? It's much better. Punching through, punching through the lines into into the midfield um, mm. is so much better, so much more progressive than side to side. Um, yeah. And trying to play in down the down the flanks, uh, which could be very yeah. easily done in a in a three five two, uh, or yeah. a, or a whatever that is three four two one, which uh, whichever formation we're playing. Um, mm -hmm. The point being, it. It can be very easy to go side to side in it with wing backs um, because you just have so much width. But I really like the way that we're, you know, we're moving the ball through the lines, um, yeah, and I, we have, you know, we've got players very capable of carrying the ball. Chat Vatadza, uh, Tom Delibashiru, 
Um, even loser can, you know, drop drop in and carry the ball forward. Um, obviously, yeah, no. Kone is a massive loss um, as far as a ball carrying player goes. But I yeah. think we can, we have players still that can do that. Um, but that's th- those are those are definitely some positives. Um, just the way we've been moving the ball about is uh, yeah. is a bit more intent about us. The final product. We've been saying this for years. We need <laughs> to sign a striker that can finish, you know, consistently. Um, yeah. Looking at uh, just an opening day suggestion that we kind of put together um, in terms of the the starting eleven. It's going to be Bio up front. Uh, we've seen a lot of Bar, who's looked very uh, tenacious. He's looked exciting. Um, but I don't think he's ready to start in the championship, especially not on the opening day. Yeah. And Ryovic just really hasn't featured that much. So mm. the only alternative is Bio, who started yesterday against Brentford. Um, Played well, I thought. Yeah, he, he, he seemed to play okay, holding the ball up. Um which he is, he is better than Ryovic at um, and better than Barr at. I think Barr is much more of a getting behind, pressing kind of forward where you know, Barr can hold the ball. He doesn't have much pace, but his press is okay. Um, but yeah, it's it's definitely going to be Barr starting up front. But the what one, sits uh, behind that is, uh, yeah, yeah. is a completely different story. No, you're right, and I think he want, cleverly wants to play two tens, doesn't he? Really, mm. I think that seems to be the vibe. Which, which it, I personally I think is is great for someone like Bio or yeah. or, or Ryovic as well, because th- those players need people around them. Yeah, it's a bit more support. With. Um, so it's, and I think, I think it, if I was to pick based on preseason performance, I would be going with Chakvatadze and Loser behind, um, yeah. behind Bio. Which I, which I think works. They're two technical players. They can both score. They can both shoot from distance. Yeah. Um, and I think if you if you free those those two up to stay forward, mm. I think they could be really threatening. Um, just got to hope that we get players into the box. Um, if those wing backs are being released, we need to get people up in the box uh, to to create some chances. Yes. Yeah. But the the issue is is. As far as I've been watching preseason, um, I think Rocco Vata has been our brightest player by a country mile. Yeah, big he's time. looked excellent. Um, he looked really good against Gillingham, really good against Hibernian. Obviously, I think he was sick, or he was he missed Wickham because of illness. Um, disappointingly, didn't feature yesterday, uh, which I was you know very very mm. annoyed about to be honest because he's you know been a very creative outlet for us. Where does he fit in? Obviously, well, has we asked... to be in one of the uh, you know the ten positions, one of the forward roles. Yeah. But who do you you know who do you substitute out for that? I think Jack Vitadze is going to start every time because he has to be the key player as far as I'm concerned this season. Um, you know, second year in in the championship now, great Euros with Georgia. His market value is going to be going up. He needs to have a good season to get a good move away yeah. from Watford. Yeah. He has to start. Whether we keep loser or not, that's a completely different story. Um, you know, I said this towards the end of last season. I, I said I thought Cleverly could be the man to turn loser around. And having him back is basically a new signing. Whether we keep yeah. him and whether we can get him firing yeah. on all cylinders is, is, is a completely different question. But I think Vata, I, I, I feel for Vata because I think he deserves to start. But where does he sit in that formation? Uh, uh, yeah, I remember when Vata signed, we asked uh, on the socials what, what we thought Vata's role would be. And I think the majority of uh, people voted for um, regular substitute, mm. which I think still fits. I think yeah. it still works. Um I think the obvious substitution would be for for Chakvatadze or Loser, depending yeah. on how the performances are going. But uh, yeah, I think of of those two, mm. Vata would come in for for Loser. I Probably, think. yeah, because you you could drop Loser a bit deeper if you really wanted to. Yeah, but I think I think Vata's been, um, I think Vata has been 
really good and yeah. I really enjoyed his performance against Hibbs. Uh, I think I think we might have found a player there who can who can actually um really contribute this season. Yes. Cuz uh, yeah. cuz he looked he looked sharp and he looked direct which I think is what Watford fans want. Yeah, just somebody to attack the box really and shoot and I I don't think he's uh, oh, I mean, shown by his goal. He's not afraid of shooting outside the box. Um yeah. he's had, he had a number of other chances across the other pre-season uh, features he's made. I think he could be the real deal, um, but maybe for this season or at least the start of the season, yeah, potentially a, a an impact sub um, is is the role for him. Anyway, James, speaking, uh, we've mentioned a couple of players who have made the transfer into Watford this season. Yeah. Um, just linking in the other three, uh, obviously Jonathan Bond returning from LA Galaxy on a free. Yeah. As well yeah. as Antonio Tikvich and uh, and Yasser Larusi, uh, both joining Watford on a loan. Um, <laughs> yeah. Udinese, an Udinese loan, as far as I'm concerned, doesn't really count as a transfer. Um, <laughs> so and and also, I think Tikvich has been absolutely hideous so far in preseason. Yeah, so I feel bad for the guy. It's. Uh, he is firmly fourth choice centre back, probably fifth choice if Hoot stays. So yeah. I don't I do know how much do. he's going to be playing this season. Um, I worry. Larusi is a uh, is an interesting signing, uh, loan with an option to buy. That worries me. Um, mm-hmm. That suggests that even after making a number of sales in the past couple of years, we still don't have enough money to buy someone outright. Um, exercising our use of especially, five loans again, um, yeah, especially is, in such a key position for us to be identified. It's uh, yeah, we 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 kind of identified. We plugged the gap last year, left wing back with uh, with Jamal Lewis on loan. Mm-hmm. He was another one with a with an option to buy, which we didn't take, thankfully. Um, Rightfully, don't say we don't get some things right. <laughs> I think um, so. Larusi, whilst we're on it, um, mm. firstly disappointed he didn't even feature yesterday, even yeah. off the bench for a couple of minutes. Uh, that's sort of alarm bells for, for opening day of the season, which suggests, which is why I think we thought Ngaki may play out on the left on on day one, mm. which is fine. But yeah. Um, yeah. I, the thing that concerns me is that the amount of people that I have told that we've signed Larusi. And I saw that the voices of Vic dudes had um, the chap from the Shepherd United podcast on. Yeah, and uh, Larusi is formerly of uh, Liverpool, uh, and obviously a long-term friend of the pod. Uh, Nick, uh, good friend of mine, best friend of mine, uh, is a Liverpool fan. Also, he says he's not scared. <laughs> he's never been to Liverpool, so fine. Um, uh, they're not convinced at all uh, about him defensively. Uh, right. Which is a little bit of a worry, uh, but seems to be relatively positive about him going forward. Yeah, so, um, I think so uh, if... that was the general feeling that uh, Troy. I'd, I'd, I've probably butchered that, but I think that I think that's French bang team. on. Yeah, that's bang on. Oh, well, what, what can I? What can I say? What can I say? I've been brushing up on my uh, my pronunciation what? over the summer. That's been my preseason yeah, outing. As, as you're being preseason session, is <laughs> a bit of extra on pronunciation. I've just been trying to pronounce some uh, some difficult names in the championship this season but i think the uh you know he he's he did okay for tra <laughs> yeah <laughs> trying not to butcher it um going forward especially uh got a few assists but i think he kind of faded out again and obviously went to sheffield united <laughs> who conceded a thousand goals last season <laughs> defensively yeah I don't know. Maybe having three at the back is a completely different story. He's not as isolated defensively. And we just need some pace going forward, to be honest. Just um, need that natural left foot. And outlet, even, yes- yeah. even yesterday, I think there was it was it was tough. Chat Patadze, I think, found it tough to release the, uh, Ngakia, who yeah. I thought did pretty well, actually, on the left. But, you know, you just want someone who doesn't have to think if you are going to play that system, someone you can release into that channel that can then put balls into the into the box sort mm. of naturally. Yeah, it's... So, high hopes for Larusi. I hope so, yeah. However, you've mentioned Ngakia. I have been pleasantly surprised by that man. Um, oh, well. 
I had a I had a brief conversation with uh with friend of the pod James from the Watford way. Um oh yeah. Who <laughs> who has told me he um he refuses to be swayed on Ngakia. Um <laughs> despite you know despite his uh <laughs> his preseason escapades. I think Ngakia has looked really good going forward. He's looked fast. He's looked direct. Um yep. And he's, he looks like he can finally put a ball into the box. Whether, you know, whether his legs still work come November. That's the problem. Then, you know, it's a really great problem to have whether you play him on the left, LaRussi on the left, or you play Ngaki on the right, or Andrews on the right. You know, it's a good, it's a good problem to finally have some depth in, uh, in left and right wing back positions. Um, but yeah, I'm. Uh, I've, I've been very pleasantly surprised by Ngakia this preseason. Hopefully, he it, can. Uh, yeah. He can finally come good for Watford. Well, you've got to hope so. And I think the, the growing concern is I've got three people on my opening day suggestion uh, team sheet who we know for a fact their seasons only ever run until November. Yeah. Uh, and that is Ngakia, loser, and Sierra Alta uh, yeah. before before their legs fall apart. Uh, which is which is a worry. Or they just uh, give because... up and want to go to France. Oh, yeah, or they just yeah decide that it's a bit cold and horrible. Uh, so yeah, that's that's the real concern, isn't it? Is that um, I just feel like the depth is is an issue. Yeah, um, issue for us. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Then we've uh, we've looked at the players coming into the London Colony and uh, and Vicarage Road over the summer. Let's take a look at some of the players that have uh, have left, notably. Um, Ishmael Kone for 12 million euros reported um, a good yeah. bit of business we've made 4 million euros on him I think we we probably could have got a bit more for him to be honest um, yeah he looked really good in that Canada side that made it all the way to the semi-finals of the Copa America um, yeah. definitely a key player for us last year and it was as I was scrolling through Twitter I don't think I've ever been as sad as a uh, as as when I finally started to see, you know, big clubs in Europe uh, reposting some of his compilations and just <laughs> yeah. realising that the world had discovered who Ishmael Kone was. Um, that his time is well and truly up. Yeah, yeah, he was never staying at Watford, um, which is a massive shame. But he's going to have a great career and hopefully Marseille is the place for him. Um, who also like to sack managers willy nilly, so maybe he'll fit in, you know, right at home. He'll feel right at home there. Um, but yeah, he is the only player that's gone for any money. Uh, three other players have left Watford. Ashley Fletcher uh, has gone to the seaside. Um, yeah. Blackpool, uh, which is interesting when he's not, you know, in Ibiza. Ben Hamer has uh, has vacated and gone to Sheffield Wednesday, I believe. And Jake Livermore uh, obviously was released. I don't think he is with club at the moment. Yeah, um, no. And I'm not sure if he's going to uh, go back into professional football this season. Maybe. Um, it would be nice to see him still playing. Um, but yeah, th those are the only transfers out. But then you look at the, uh, you know, the net income. It's, you know, it's 11 almost 11.7 11.8 million euros and then we look at the past few seasons now this is uh this is where it gets interesting um and i'm sorry viewers and listeners if you don't particularly like hearing lots of numbers and stats um but the net income since relegation in 21 22 has been 130.1 million euros. Uh, three transfers to Udinese, so they're definitely all inflated and with some sort of money laundering. Uh, that has totaled 30 and a half million. Um, <laughs> but that's basically Gino shaking hands of himself and uh, transferring one lot of money to his other bank account. That leaves 99.61 million euros worth of income purely from transfers um, yeah, in the past three seasons. That is a, an extremely large amount of money. Yeah. And then you're looking at the net spend. Um, during the same time period 
is 23.64 million. 18.81 of that was spent in the first season back in the championship. So we spent about 5 million euros in two seasons, James. Yeah. I think that's the worry, isn't it? Where, where is this money going and what, yeah. what is happening to it? Because I, I know that we know that transfer mm -hmm. deals are uh, these days structured in, in various different ways. And that's, you know, how Watford, to be honest with you, have got into the into the financial mess they've got into is because yeah. they, you know, they, they, they agree to a, a staged instalment of a transfer deal, but then they will go to a loan company, a loan, a, a bank, basically, and we'll say, well, the, the the value of that deal was thirty million. We want a loan for thirty million now, so we can use that, and yeah. then we'll pay 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 that off as as instalments. So we end up end up owing money. Uh, yeah, you know, it's it, it's not really a viable business model. No, and I think we're feeling the pinch of it now because I think what they're having to do is realizing that they have to keep cutting the cloth accordingly to uh, make make the squad and the club viable. Mm. And that just literally means that I suspect large chunks of money are paying off loans um, yes. to, to keep the club to keep the club going, which is yeah. Well, it's 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 not great. It's nice to know that we might have a club for like another couple of seasons, but um, <laughs> it, it does mean that I think transfer business is transfer business and and incomings are going to look more and more like free deals, loans, and, yeah. You know small figures um, yeah it's uh it's it's years. a sad way to go um really going from you know 2019 20 we smash our transfer mm. record 30 million pounds on uh on ishmael Assar. now we can't even scrape together half a million for you know for a transfer five years later it's it's a sad decline but you're looking at the figures here, £106 million worth of profit on transfers in the past three seasons, plus yep. the £4 million in fan-raised uh, fan money. Where is this money going? That's you, You've mentioned uh, you know, paying off debts and, and instalments. We're basically putting ourselves under our own micro-FFP um, <laughs> charge. We have to. Which... Well, yeah, we're gonna have to because ultimately, we'll uh, <laughs> we'll run out of money, and uh, Gino will probably up and sell for next to nothing because he doesn't care, um, and we could be in a real mess. Uh, they, you know, also they've they've been trying to get the club out of debt for the past couple of seasons. Um, I don't mm. think there's been any word on whether we actually are finally out of debt. They kind of pinpointed. Was it last season that they were they planned to be completely debt free? Uh, it wasn't planned. It was it was confirmed, wasn't it? Or well, confirmed. You know, inverted commas. Yeah. That's what Scott Duxby told us at that at the last time, the first time ever we had Gino Pozzo speak to us mm. was you know we'd be debt free by the end of the season, which was I thought it was a bold statement at the time yeah. um, to come out with something like that. Yeah, it's... Uh, but I but I guess you know you have to take that to to a degree at face value because that's empirical you know that's the sort of thing that you can prove mm. so if the club says they're going to be debt free then then in theory they they should be debt free um you just got to hope that 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 did pan out yeah yeah um but it kind of it does beg the question of how much debt were Watford in um to require basically you know 100 million pounds 100 oh. million euros just to to bail us out and yeah then you're looking at the transfers this season. It kind of fits together, doesn't it? Um, Twelve million for Kone. If we get twenty-five for Aspria, maybe we'll see another face come through the doors. Maybe a, a couple of other players come through the doors, but they It'll won't be, be for they won't be for high. You know, they won't be for high value. Um, yeah. It's very much scraping the barrel season for Watford um, financially. You know, we're well, we're struggling. Yeah, we cannot I... compete with. You know, even the top six in the championship currently, let alone with uh, with the Premier League. It's a uh, yeah, it's it's a nasty fall, isn't it? From uh, from where we were a few seasons ago. Oh yeah, it, it, completely. It, this is this is all down to mismanagement and a mm. lack of communication. Right? That's what we said at the start of this. Is that yeah, I don't think 
we're now in a situation where you can't have a meaningful discussion about Watford and, and you know, looking forward to the season and where we're going without ending up at the, at the, at the start again, talking about Pozzo and the ownership and, yeah. and what are we actually doing? Why don't, why don't they talk to us? Um, it, yeah, as, it's as weird, fans, isn't it? You know? It is weird. Um, it's but... just it's becoming incredibly frustrating and demoralising uh, to a degree because you know, what are we supposed to do? Or what what is there to get excited about? You mm. know? Um, yeah, you know, in some ways, if 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 Scott Duxbury came out and said, "Yeah, we're, our ambition is 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 mid table, um, and we're planning to be mid table for the next five seasons whilst we recoup all the debt because we got it wrong," well, okay, that's not great news, but. You know, I I think a large proportion of the fan base will go. Okay, well, at least you've admitted to your failings. There's a plan yeah. in place, and we can get behind. You know, a cup run. We can get behind blooding academy players. We can get behind. Yeah, you know, exactly. Back to the war type stuff. Going to you know, going to away days or or welcoming the big boys for Vicarage Road. You know, mm. fans will be more willing to make that into a bit more of like a, a hostile atmosphere. But you know, build a, you know, realize that we're the underdogs. Yeah. But that, but now we just don't know what we are. We no, it's, know. and it's really, you know, the very few bits of communication we get from anyone at the top of Watford, it's still very much like we want to be competitive this season. What does that mean? Are we competing in a relegation battle? Or are we competing <laughs> yeah. for a mid-table obscurity? Or, because let's be honest, I don't think even, you know, a couple of seasons ago, they could have looked at that squad and gone, you know what, they, they probably might be all right for the for the upcoming season in the championship to compete and try and get playoffs. You cannot look at the squad we have now. You can't look at the bench and the starting eleven that is left the Watford and say that's going to be competitive in the championship because it's not going to be, unfortunately. No, um, it's not. Because we're not idiots as football fans. We're no, not idiots. No. You know, you know, we're a relatively educated fan base as most fans of their club would say, telling us that, you know, oh, it's like that um, investment opportunity. Buy 10% of the club and, you know, we'll take your money and we'll reinvest it in the playing squad. We're not idiots. Like, we know what's happening there. They're just trying to spread the um, liabilities across the club so, you know, that it all doesn't just fall down on on Gino Pozzo. Uh, You know, they've raised four million so far. Yeah of 17 and a half and there's been nothing coming to the into the squad so you know what 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 do you what do they expect from us it's it's silly isn't it um i just why would you not just be straightforward tell us you know we're we're trying to spread some costs we need you know the club needs money people are passionate about watford they're going to rise up and say the club needs us you know they yeah. they've dug this hole. It's happened so many times before when fans have bought back clubs from owners just to keep it going because they yeah. care. I don't yeah. think if you asked Gino Pozzo, he would be able to give you an answer about what he feels about Watford at the moment. Which is such a shame. It's it such is. a shame considering you know we've had these owners for ten years now. It's just over the tenth season um, that, that we've. We've been and we're we're back to square one, albeit with you know much better facilities and higher standing and all that kind of stuff. But you know we are we're back to square one, sadly. Yeah. Um, which which is not where we want to be and not really what we wanted to be talking about um just before the season kicks off. No, no, it's a it's really a, a damp note to to kick off the season and and it's it's quite sad to be talking about this already. Um, you know. Even last season, we were quite excited for the season, the upcoming season. Um, yeah. And then, as it carried on, and we and we, you know, get further into the season, and the wheels fall off, then you can be a bit more like, oh well, you know, this is going wrong, this is going wrong. I think the fact that it's being highlighted from now. Yeah. By all the fans, it's yeah, it's definitely a telltale sign of, of probably something big happening soon. I don't know what it that is. It does feel like it. Yeah, it does feel like it. But it's not, you know, it's. I don't want it to get hostile because I, you know, I, I love Watford. I love going to watch Watford. Um, you know, just, you know, we had a, the, the away days. Last season, we got battered by Leicester, but it was a great day. 
and the yeah, Watford fans are on top form. Um, and it's just it's that's the thing, isn't it? That the fans love Watford, you know, no matter what. The people that go and watch, um, everyone cares about Watford. It just doesn't feel like it comes right from the top, and that's yeah, it's a real shame. It is, but I think that's why, you know, a lot of outlets. And I'm fully supportive of it. Are, are, are talking about just rallying together as a fan base. You know, mm. we'll be here long after uh, Pozzo has 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 left. Yeah. Um. You know, and and a club will be here. Hopefully, it'll be the same one. But there, you know, there will always be a Watford. Yeah. That fans will want to go and watch, regardless. So, we need to pull together as a as a group. We do. Fan base yeah. And, I mean, and, and, and get behind what's out there on a Saturday afternoon because that's that's really all we can do. Uh, simply because I don't feel like action will make any difference against Gianni Pozzo. He simply doesn't care. No. He won't talk to us. He won't. He won't engage with it. So, you know, you can protest all you want, but or you can suggest, you know, action. I just don't see how it will actually work um, in in getting what what you want. Uh, personally, mm. I believe that if the offer comes in for the asking price of the club, Pozzo sells immediately without thinking about it. Um, yeah, and because because you know that, that's just business. Um, it is, yeah. It's not that he doesn't want to sell. I think every football club, apart from you know the the biggest clubs in the world, are always for sale because football clubs inherently lose money. So if you get the right offer, you you, you you'll take it. Mm. Or not. Okay, I think that's enough of the uh, the downers. Yeah, come on. We need to. Uh... We need to discuss some more of the exciting things that are going to be happening yes. this season. Um, I think we can start with the kits. I think the kits are fabulous this season. Back in oh, the red yeah. shorts. Huge fan. Get, go on, give us a rating uh, of the kit out of 10. The home kit. Uh, so, uh, very difficult to do accurately uh, at the start of the season because I think success on the pitch elevates the score of a kit. Yeah. But I think we're we're currently me. I think we're sat at a eight out of ten. Mm. Minus minus points for the big old Mister Q, but yeah. plus points for the club for offering it for uh, without the Mister Q sponsor. Yeah, you don't but, really uh, see that many clubs doing that. It's, it's not done very often, but I think the club have really messaged that very well. So I think it's it's an absolute beauty, isn't it? Love the pinstripes. I think the yeah, I think the yellow is a lovely colour. Mm. It's it's simple in the sense that you know it's it's Watford. You look at that, it's Watford. Red shorts, glorious. We're back in business. <laughs> um, it's give me real. It's give me real oh five oh six vibes. Mm. I don't know about you. Um, yes. You know, that, yeah, that yeah. Playoff promotion season. Jay Demerit header at the at the far post um, against Leeds in the playoff final mm. type vibes. Yeah. Uh, so I'm I'm loving it. The only thing that will get it up to a nine or a ten would be a successful promotion season, mm. which is a little bit off it, but you know, miles we, off we, it. We I think. Spoke about that, but you know, I think it's a great kit. Love it. I love what they've done. And and Kelmay, you say what you want to about Kelmay, but they don't do a template kit, do they? So oh, I think no. it's a little bit, little bit different. So yeah, mate, I'm loving the home kit. What do you think about it? What do you think about the away kit? Uh I uh, well, I'll start with the home kit. Fabulous. Love the yellow. Really reminds me of those uh, the old school. Um, I'm just looking at the uh, the big Iveco shirt from 1984 Ooh, yeah. in front of me. The FA Cup final against Everton. Um, it's very much that kind of yellow. Uh, love the pinstripes and yeah, I think Kelmeyer have done it again. Um, it's yeah, it's a great He's kit. He's done it again. He has done it again. The away kit. Very nice, very nice. I love the detailing all over it. Um, like the uh, the kind of sash, it's very much the uh, Danny Graham 2010 era. Oh yes, um, the, those Birder shirts um, oh. from uh, from from yesteryear. Uh, love love it. Love the uh, yeah. Love the detailing all over it. Um, it's a it's a Hornet, isn't it? It's Hornet detailing, which is properly cool. Yeah, it's um, real old school. This isn't like references to our badges from the fifties and sixties. I, I think so. I think Which is so. Really nice. A real nice touch, that actually. Yeah, and uh, yeah, what can you not like about uh, an old school blackout Watford shirt? Um, really cool. Um, and it's, it's it's probably quite an unpopular opinion. I don't mind Mister Q. Um, 
I think steak was far worse because it was just yeah. so massive. Um, <laughs> yeah. It took up 90% of the shirt steak did. Um, but you know what? As far as as far as Mr. Q goes, I'm not I'm not really the biggest hater. I don't mind, but I do think it's yeah, you know, it's a great thing that the club offers the option to buy it without um, even on adult shirts. I know because it's a betting yeah. sponsor, they refuse to put it on um, children's shirts. But I think that's for every club in the country. I think that's a, yeah. a law that's put in Lost place. Legal, yeah. Um, but yeah, for uh, as far as uh, as far as kits go, I think we've got a really nice set this year, much better mm. than the uh, the away kit and third kit of last season. Um, the third kit hasn't been announced yet. Um, I have seen some rumours that it will be pink. Your rumours. And I think it might be coming out on like the 16th of August or something. Um, something along that time frame. Uh, it's not unusual for Watford to release a third kit while the season's gone on. Um, while the season's going on, sorry. Uh, they did it in the Premier League uh, a couple of seasons ago. Uh, but yeah, I'm looking forward to that one as well. I think we could complete a very nice trio of kits this season. One will definitely be being copped, as far as I'm concerned, this year. <laughs> yeah, okay, it's then. Isn't it? we'll uh, we'll go through. I think we've got to go through what the plan is for the podcast this season, just to tie things yeah. off. Um, yeah, we have put our heads together, um, and we really want to turn this uh, the podcast much more into like a, a show uh, that will uh, you know come out every single week. Um, obviously, the uh, the main premise is the uh, the game week uh, with the game on the Saturday. Podcast to be out as usual on uh, on Monday morning, um, and you know we'll we'll continue with that time frame uh, YouTube video on the Wednesday. So that won't change as far as the, the viewers are concerned. There will be a few more segments. I don't think we'll reveal everything. Uh, we've got up our sleeves so far um, but we're focusing more on having individual segments um, breaking it up for you know just to make it easier to listen to uh, rather than just having us rambling for an hour um, which is <laughs> as, as great as it is to record um, might not be as interesting for some people to uh, to listen to um, but yeah go James I'll let you go ahead and uh, and introduce a couple of segments yeah, so um, yeah, the, uh, kind of the, the main one. Uh, but I'll come to the main one at the end because that will link into a few little bits. But yeah, so this season we're going to be rocking out with uh, the tail of the games. So that's going to be a little bit more of a fast-paced rundown of the actual game, so we can all refamiliarise ourselves with, with what happened and any of the key points uh, from the Saturday afternoon. Um, so you know we'll, we'll, we've got the tail of the game coming up. Guess the player will be making its glorious return. I've got some demons to avenge for choking <laughs> on the final day last year. So Fabulous. guess the player will be back. A fan um, favourite. So please play along. Favorite. Yeah, please get involved. Let us know how you're getting on as well. And we'll, I'll also we'll also take suggestions for players on on the side as well. If you uh, if you have anything, um, uh, we're gonna we've got the news or just general talking points. We haven't got a catchy name for that yet. But we'll we'll get we'll, get we'll something figure something out. That, we'll figure we'll figure something out. out. But, you know, we're going to be just talking generally about Watford, what's going on, any sort of big stories that either happened as a result of the game at the weekend or just generally uh, around Watford so we can uh, explore some of those points a little bit further. Uh, and then kind of the big one for this year, which we're so delighted that there's been so much interest and uptake in it um, already, is uh, EFL Fantasy League. That is, um, That's that, the big is going to be, that is going to be the big one. Uh, and then uh, we'll also uh, chuck in um, loan watch as well. So we're going to be having a little bit more of a deep dive into the players that are currently out of the club, seeing how they're getting on, see if anybody may want to uh, be about what to recall to, to come into the first team. But yeah, Fantasy League, mate, it's here. EFL Fantasy League is live. Our league is up there. We've yes. had we've got we've had some great uptake on it. And um, what's the score, mate? How are we going to run it? Okay, well, we've uh, we've decided this season, uh, obviously, to start the uh, the EFL Fantasy League for the podcast. Um, we thought it'd be a great little segment, uh, a great way for you guys, the viewers, to get involved. 
um, as well as you know people who follow us on Twitter, Instagram. Um, and what we're going to be doing is we've enforced uh, some rules, okay? So uh, mm-hmm. we'll individually have a team. We can do whatever we want with that. Uh, try and uh, try and win, maybe. What we're going to be doing is having a podcast team. And what we're going to do is enforce some in-house rules on ourselves each week, which you guys can decide at home. So what we have so far is there will always be one Watford player in the side each week. They will always include a player from our opponent of the week. And our second club will always be decided by the listeners at home. So we'll put out a poll on Twitter and Instagram of uh, of four teams that we decide to pick. And you guys at home will choose who our second team of the week will be. It's entirely up to you. Uh, Pick whoever you want. Pick if you want us to do well if you want us to flop. Um, <laughs> but our first team, of course, will be Watford. And, uh, and yeah, we have an exciting uh, prize for the winner of the league. Currently, there's 15 people involved. Um, so if you have any friends who are playing fantasy this season or you know anyone else, any other listeners, please get involved. The prize is an item of choice from art of football and we're yeah we're very excited about this art of football probably one of the the you know probably one of the best brands of uh, of sport kind of memorabilia isn't it it's it's kind of sport fashion uh yeah. going at the moment so yeah the winner of the fancy league this season will get to pick from uh, from the watford section anything they desire and uh we will get it sent to you absolutely I'm looking forward to fantasy league, mate. I think it's gonna it's very different is what I'll, is what I'd say. Yes. Um, and yeah. I think I think, you know, as the listeners just kind of bear with us as we're trying to work out um the, the best way uh, that we can make it work for for you guys as well. So, cuz it's 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 different to the fantasy premier league. Obviously, yeah. they could just do the same thing. Um so we just yeah, we're going to we're going to see how it goes, test and adjust along the way. Um but it's 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 it should be quite good. I'm looking forward to it. I'm trying to understand all the rules, um, but uh, yeah, it's it's a nice little uh, nice little touch from the football league to, to kind of bring the fans together with with, with their own version of, of fantasy league. Um, so yeah, I think that could be uh, could be something really fun to get involved in uh, as part of the, as part of the show. Mm. Well, I think that just about rounds everything off for the uh, the preview, the season preview 24 25. Just before we go, James. Yeah, predictions. Where do you think Watford are going to finish this season? Um, I'm going to stick my neck out on the line. I'm going to say somewhere between 11th and 16th. Interesting. Well, what about you? That is interesting. I was going to go slightly lower, but I'm going to play devil's advocate here. I'm going to say anywhere between... Ninth and fifteenth. <laughs> I've got faith in uh, in cleverly and the boys. Um, I think neither of that will happen, and we'll probably finish between twelfth and sixteenth. But I'm saying, from uh, from my heart, ninth to fifteenth. I'll back. Well, we're the being boys. written off, aren't we? We're being written off by pretty much everybody. Literally. So that's, that's... That's usually a good sign, mm. uh, so we can we can go and we can try and take it to a few teams this season and, and have a bit of fun along the way. Absolutely, um, but come on, mate, come on. We've had a bit of a we've had a bit of a whinge. Yes, we know that the ownership <laughs> is a bit of a challenge. Yes, yeah. we know we haven't signed anybody and the squad's threadbare, um, and we've not played particularly well so far preseason. But come on, it's opening day. We've got to back ourselves, haven't we? We've got to get out of there. Of course, we've got to be excited, and we've got to get ourselves up for the season. So I'm ready for it. I hope you're ready for it. Let's get after it. Sweet. Well, thank you very much for listening to the first podcast back. We hope you have enjoyed. Go on, tell a friend, pass the pod. We'll steal that. We'll nab it from Peter Crouch. Pass the pod. (laughs) Get your friends involved. Get everyone listening. Uh, This season is going to be massive for, for Watford. 
Uh, and I think it's going to be massive for the podcast as well. Yeah, come on. Thank you all for listening. Don't forget to uh, drop us a follow on Twitter and Instagram. We're very active on there. Drop us a message, any suggestions. We're always happy to hear and, uh, and happy to implement anything you guys want to hear on the podcast. But thank you very much for listening. And we'll catch you again after opening day against Millwall. Come on, you Orms. Let's go, boys. Thank you.